Now we're going to use what we have learned from trigonometric ratios and inverse trigonometric ratios and a little bit of Pythagorean theorem mixed in to solve a right triangle. And what we mean by solving a right triangle is that we're going to find the missing angle measures and the missing side lengths using combinations of inverse trigonometric ratios and trigonometric ratios and sometimes we're going to even use Pythagorean theorem. So let's look at what we have here and before we start as I usually do I know I'm going to be using trigonometric ratios and at the top of my paper I'm going to write so ka toa sine equals opposite over hypotenuse cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse tangent equals opposite over adjacent okay so i got two side lengths here and i want to find my hypotenuse i like to do that first too and so i see my hypotenuse directly opposite the right angle is right here and it's got a measure of 13. And then I've got a side length here of five. Well, since I have two side lengths, I think I'm going to go ahead and find an angle measure. And I could choose either G or F. I'm going to choose F. I'm going to find the angle measure of F. And so I'm looking at F and I've got opposite, the side opposite F, I know, is 5, and the hypotenuse is 13. So I could use the inverse trigonometric ratio to find F. So let's see. So the inverse sine of F equals 5 over 13. Now, in the previous video, I used the calculator and showed you how to solve that. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to take the inverse sine, 5 over 13, close my parentheses, round it to the nearest degree, and that's 23. So the measure of angle F equals 23. Now, since I'm working on angles, and now that I have said that this is 23, and I know angle H is 90, I might as well go ahead and solve for angle G. And I'm just going to simply 180 minus 90 minus 23. That should give me the measure of angle G. 180 minus 90 minus 23 equals 67. So the measure of angle G is 67. All right, so I got the two angles. I got one side left to go. Now, one of the things when we are solving triangles, I want to use most often what I have been given. I want to base all my uh, calculations around what I have been given as much as possible. And so I know the two side links here. And I know that the hypotenuse is 13. So I could just use a little bit of Pythagorean. So let's see, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's substitute 5 in for a. And so now we got 5 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared hypotenuse squared well 5 squared is 25 plus b squared 13 squared is 169 why don't we subtract 25 from both sides so then b squared is equal to 144 and you may already recognize what the answer is going to be but we're going to take the square root of both sides of this to isolate the b and solve for b and b is equal to 12. and so there we go using the inverse 
trigonometric ratio, we found measure F using the triangle sum theorem. Triangle angle sum theorem, we found a measure of angle G, and using Pythagorean, we found side FH, which was 12. And we based that off of the uh, inverse sine function is what got us started. Shall we look at another? Yes, we shall. All right, what do we know this time? Well, this time we know the angle A is 62. And eh, I still like to put Sokotoa up here. I still want to find my hypotenuse right quick. There it is at 10. Hypotenuse has a measure of 10. I know angle 62. Well, let's go ahead and find the measure of angle C. So the measure of angle C is going to equal 180 minus 90 minus 62. Let's see what that is. 180 minus 90 minus 62 equals 28. So the measure of angle C equals 28. All right, so I only know one side length at the moment. And that is the hypotenuse. Now, I could use either my measure of angle C or uh, A, but I've been given the measure of angle A, and that is 62 degrees. So, let's uh, see. Well, why don't we find the opposite side of 62? And if I'm going to use the opposite side and I find, know the inverse, I mean the hypotenuse, that's 10. Let's set it up like this. So the sine of 62 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. And the opposite, I don't know. So, well, let's see. Let's just multiply both sides by 10. So we got 10 is the sine of 62. is going to be the opposite sine. Well, let's just go ahead and call that BC for that side length. And let's see, I'm going to go 10 times the sine of 62. We're going to round this to the nearest tenth, 8.82. So BC is 8.8 .8 equals BC. So that's 8.8. .8. So I got one more side to go, and that's AB. And again, I want to stick with what I have been given at the beginning of the problem. And I was given the angle measure 62, and I was given the measure of the hypotenuse, which was 10. So AB, side AB is the adjacent side to 62. And so let's see, I could use the cosine, COA. Or co, not coa, co, so ka toa, so ka toa. So let's set this up. Then we want the, we're going to say that the cosine of 62 equals the adjacent, which we will identify as AB over the hypotenuse, 10. And so now we got 10 times the cosine of 62 is going to equal the measure of AB. Well, let's try that on for size. 10 times the cosine of 62, and that is 4.69. And we're going to say that that's approximately equal. AB then is approximately equal to 4.7. And I should have used this approximate here as well. And so there, 4.7. So now, we found the measure of angle C. We found the measure of side length BC. And we have found the measure of side length, side length AB. And we have, in fact, solved that triangle. And let's try to do one more again just for fun.
All right. <clears throat> what do we know this time? Hmm. Well, let's see. We're doing Sokotoa. And my hypotenuse is right here, but I don't know what the value of that is. I've got an angle measure down here. R is 33. And the side opposite the angle 33 is 16. Well, I think I'll first, since I know two angle measures, I think I'm going to first find the measure of angle P. So we've got the measure of angle P equals 180 minus 90 minus 33. Uh, do, 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 one eight uh, minus nine uh, minus three three. Measure of angle P then is going to be fifty seven. All right, fifty seven. Now, I know I've been given the measure of angle R. And I've been given the measure of the side opposite of that. And if I wanted to go ahead and find the hypotenuse, I could do that. I could use the sine function opposite over hypotenuse. Let's do that. So we've got the sine of 33 equals 16. That's the side opposite over. Uh, well, so let's call this PR, the hypotenuse. P R. All right, so let's see if I multiply both sides by PR, I've got PR sine 33 equals 16. Uh, then to get PR isolated, my variable, I can divide both sides by the sine of 33. And so we've got PR equals 16 over the sine of 33. And that should give us an approximate angle measure, I mean, not angle, side length for PR. So 16 divided by the sine of 33, and that comes to 29.37. Let's round that to 29.4. So, our hypotenuse is approximately 29.4. All right, I still know the angle. I was still given the angle measure of 33. Still given the opposite side is 16. And now I need to find the adjacent side. Opposite, adjacent, opposite, adjacent. Ah, I've got a trick function for that. It's called the tangent, TOA. Well, we're going to set this up very similar. Uh, we're going to then have the tangent of 33 equals the side opposite, which we know is 16, over the adjacent side, and we're going to call it QR. All right, and very similar, I'm going to multiply both sides by QR. Then I'm going to turn around and divide by the tangent of 33. And when we do, we've got QR equals 16 over the tangent of 33 and that should give us the side length for qr and it'll be approximate because i don't think it'll be exact i think it'll be some kind of weird decimal so let's go 16 divided by the tangent of 3 3 boom boom 24.63, we're rounding that to the nearest tenth, 24.6, and guess what? I know it's hard to believe, but Shazam, we have found and solved. Not one, not two, but three triangles. That even deserves a second. Shazam.